Hello, dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. And so I have to, a story to tell you. It has to do with the event that took place today, the drowning of the young child. I was heading back up, um, up the beach, and I ran across... Um, I didn't actually see her, but I heard the voice of a very young person, uh, about four years old, a young girl. And we, she and I, the children all wanted to know what had happened up the beach. And I would say that, in general, uh, the majority of parents were not telling the truth to their children about what happened. One actually outright um, uh, prevaricated about it by saying that, that her child had been gravely injured. And this was with regard to... Um, uh, a young person, uh, a boy who was about, I'd say, six, six and a half years old. And um, he was old enough to be savvy to when his mom was lying or not lying. And so I said, no, you know, that might not be the truth. And he said, he said to his mother on the astral plane, Mom, you wouldn't lie to me, would you? Which was cool. It was very cool. It was a good way to say it. And it opened the door for his mom to be truthful with him. So then later, there were more questions, both by uh, grown-ups and by children, on my way back along the beach and uh, as to what had happened. Everybody somehow knew something had happened and wanted to know more about it. Um, so anyway, I got back up. I was practically ready to, to leave and go up to the parking lot. And I ran into um, the astral presence of, of the young girl that I was just mentioning. And she was one of those that um, they have a natural knack for like the mystical, the spiritual and like that. Even though in general down at the beach, all the parents were anti-religion and anti-God. Um, you will find that the children coming in uh, from birth up to about age four and a half are just naturally in tune with all that. And then at about the age of between four and a half and five, uh, their parents uh, dampen, succeed in dampening their... Um, it, 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 telling them that it's not acceptable to understand the spiritual and uh, to journey onto the astral plane and so forth. They have a million reasons for doing that. But overall umbrella reason for preventing children from knowing what's so and what's true about the various dimensions and timelines is that it's not um, according to societal expectations. Parents may phrase it in different ways. They may say, uh, like there was a child um, in our neighborhood who was four and a half, extremely gifted. Um, she and her younger brother, extremely gifted psychically. And they came over one time. I think I told you this story. I was resting. It was about a year ago. I was resting and taking a nap in the middle of the day. And they were wide awake and playing on the astral plane. So they figured out how to open up a door in one side of my, uh, outside of my head in the energy field and actually get into my energy field and like play and have fun in there while I was resting. And then they noticed that I was waking up and they, they, one of them said, quick, let's open the door. It's like they were playing hide and seek in there. And one opened the door and figured out how to close it back up again. And, but, but the other one said, um, don't close it completely up or we will, so that we can get back in again. So they left it partly open. I woke up and I go, let's just close that now. <laughs> then they went back to their dad. Their dad was playing with them um, at the place in the, in the neighborhood where they lived. And their dad was very gruff. In his, in his way of talking, as grown-ups often are. And he was very against uh, all the astral travels and all the astral skills that the young people coming in have. And so within about, oh, six months or so, he had persuaded the, the eldest never to do that stuff again. And this story about that child in the neighborhood is par for the course with the children on Earth today because their gifts are so great and so varied, and the parents just don't know how to hold that. My suggestion is that the parents should let the children be as they are, for they have much to tell us about, they have much to instruct us in, and we need to hear what they have to say. 
But that's just the beginning of the story today. The rest of the story goes like this. I was coming out of the parking lot, I was coming towards the parking lot, uh, up from the beach, and, and one of the bright young souls of today um, talk, started to talk to me about the, the tragedy that happened at the beach. And I said, well, I guess her parents' objection, her mom's objection, I said, well, we could make a little prayer. Her mom said, we're not religious people here. And, I, and, the, and the young child still wanted to know, the young girl still wanted to know about it. So, so I said, we could say, God bless the soul of that little girl with love and light. And then the young person chimed in. She said, God bless her parents the same way too. And I said, God bless everyone here with love and light. And the paramedics who helped her too. And so she, she loved that song, and, the, and I say, okay, let's imagine, and on the astral plane, I did an um, image, and it showed me with my arms straight up in the air, yay, we did great. And she lifted her arms up in the air the same way, in, in like joyful exultation. What a wonderful experience that was for me. How great to meet that young soul. So then... In a matter of minutes, I found myself in the coffee shop uh, nearby. And wouldn't you know it, there was a young man of four and a half years of age there. And I was just naturally thinking along the lines of young people and their gifts. So I said, hello. And then he said, then he said, do you know that I'm only four and a half years old? So I looked and I found him. Wow four and a half years old. And we were trying to wake up the other adults around there in the coffee shop as I waited in line, and he waited too. He was with a person. He was with a lady who was there, and she was, and, and I said, wake you, wake up, are you awake? Is what I say to the lower mental body, right? Are you awake? And, and I said, maybe not. And so I said to the young child, the young boy, I said, why is she not awake? And he said, um, because he knew for sure. You know, he was right out there with this answer. He says, because she can't show her aggravated self when she's around other people. That is right on. That is exactly right. That is why the lower mental body doesn't talk to the, to the higher mental body. Why there is this great divide in the middle and the heart can't come forth is because of societal expectations. We hide and repress our feelings um, through, uh, through um, manipulation of the field of the plane of forces by the nature elementals that we summon to repress these emotions. So in my mind I see this, this, this willing body elemental that is actually um, lying down with its hands and feet wide open, lying down on top of that emotion of aggravation and preventing her, her uh, higher mental body from discovering it. <laughs> so... So uh, then I encountered the person that was actually handing out the coffee, and I said, Wakey, wake up, are you awake? That was a, spoken to, again to the lower mental body. And the person, I could hear the person's lower mental body voice say, um, I said, Oh no, I hope that doesn't happen. And so in this case, it was a man who did not want to, um, to experience his emotions around other people. No emotions around other people. That was, and that is typical of men in the, all around Earth today, is that there's this segregation of emotions, whether good emotions or bad emotions, any kind of emotions. They have their own, like, nature spirits holding down the, the emotional content of their lower mental body. So... I got out in the parking lot and, and and I tried to contact him one more time. I said, are you awake now? And he says, oh, no, not that. So I gave it up. 